26 through 40, the New International Version. Now an angel of God said to Philip, go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. The eunuch was reading this passage of scripture. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter and as a lamb before the shearer is silent. So he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here is water. Why shouldn't I be baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of God suddenly took Philip away and the eunuch did not see him again, but went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled about preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks be to God. Amen. It is that glory to God in the highest that we invite this morning as we respond to God's word. Let us pray. Holy and beloved God, we are mindful of your spirit this morning. The spirit of love and of unity and of peace. And we invite that spirit to be amongst us this morning in this church, in this place, in our hearts and in our lives. And in that spirit of peace and unity and love, we ask that you help us to understand the good news for us, your people, this morning. So awaken us this day. Awaken us to the joy and the good news of Jesus. And in that good news and in that joy, may our spirits be lifted as we hear and as we respond. And now, God, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be acceptable to you. In Jesus' name, amen. As you might remember, a few weeks ago, uh, as we were finishing up a sermon series, uh, we invited folks to uh, let us know of the things that they wanted preached about in these few weeks between now and uh, Advent. And um, I will say, actually, only two or three people actually asked us to speak on some certain topics. Uh, now, I can take that two ways. Um, I can take that that you don't listen to the announcements and so not sure that you get to hear. Um, or I can take it that um, the, the topics that we've been preaching on this year have fulfilled our souls. Um, and I'm going to take the latter uh, just, because, um, just because otherwise my ego gets bruised and that's uh, not a good thing. One of the people that asked us to preach about was on forgiveness, and uh, of course in the last sermon series we talked extensively about forgiveness, and so they sent me a separate note saying, thank you, you've already met this need. Uh, but there were a couple of others who asked us to speak on a couple of things. One was to speak about 
um, the, the whole clobber passages that are often used against the LGBT community specifically. And, and it always surprises me, I, I have to be honest, especially those, uh, for me, as I've been a Christian and have been in the MCC for so many years, it always surprises me that this is still a topic that we need to speak about. But I get that rude awakening every now and again from folks who uh, perhaps have not been around MCC or who have not perhaps been around affirming churches. Um, and it's something that still rests deep within people's souls that need to be affirmed, that need to reconcile their own sexuality and their spirituality. Uh, and the second one was to ask a, a sermon about how do we respond to God's love and ensure that we can feel God's love in our bodies. Uh, and so over the next couple of weeks, we're going to be responding to those. I'm going to respond this morning to the first one about the clobber passages uh, from Scripture. Uh, and then next week, we're going to respond to self-love and how do we feel and sense that purpose, that place of God's love in our lives. So there's some good reasons to come back next week and to continue in this, this thought together. You know, as we were thinking about this particular sermon today, um, it was probably a little too easy to preach the clobber passages that are so often uh, referred to from Scripture. Um, and I don't want to tell you something. I'm, I'm tired of those clobber passages. I'm tired of those five or six pieces of Scripture uh, that are often used against us. Uh, and, and so when Reverend Pat and I and Reverend Alex were talking about it, we, we talked about how we might perhaps put a different spin um, on this uh, for us as a people. Uh, and there are many affirming scriptures. Um, am I not in the light? I'm about to go up in flames? <laughs> well, I've been called a flamer before, um, so um, perhaps that's not a bad thing. I'll, I'll step over here. Um, <laughs> 